I think most of the interesting advances has been in patients who are in older patients who are classically described as being unfit for intensive chemotherapy. And this is where the application of novel therapies and new agents has been most fruitful. Um, of course, this is the, um, the, the major population of patients with AML over the age of, uh, of 75 or younger patients with comorbidities that would preclude them from having intensive therapy. So there, at, at the, um, at the um, EHA, there was an update on the um, studies using venetoclax uh, in combination with azacitin or lodocytarabine. There was an update on the Viali um, uh, C trial where um, azacitin was combined with lodocytarabine by Andrew Ray. Um, and uh, this showed a, a significantly improved a response and overall survival with additional follow-up because the primary endpoint wasn't met at the first um, planned analysis, but with an additional six months follow-up, a, a treatment benefit, a survival benefit has emerged. And this particularly appears to apply to patients with NPM1 mutated AML. There was also a presentation on the VRLA data by Courtney DiNardo, which I think is potentially practice changing in that um, the randomization between venetoclax and azacitidine versus azacitidine alone was strongly in favor of the combination therapy. Um, and this is a double blind placebo controlled randomized trial um, and showed that both the, uh, pr the primary endpoint, which was um, overall survival, uh, was met with a significant survival advantage in favor of the combination with important secondary endpoints, including um, composite complete remission uh, rates and blood product utilization and blood, and blood product independence were also met. Also met. Um, so I think this, these uh, benefits in terms of response were seen across um, all types of AML, whether the de novo or secondary AML patients with um, intermediate or adverse risk cytogenetics and in all molecular subtypes of um, AML, um, including patients with adverse risk genomics, including p53 mutations. Uh, the, 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 there was some more, there was the, uh, there was some degree of increased um, myelotoxicity, uh, but this was not unexpected. And the, the treatments generally were well tolerated with 30-day um, um, mortality rates of about 6 or 7%. So this, this is potentially a practice-changing trial, and it's very likely that the standard of care for patients with um, older patients uh, unfit for intensive therapy will be transformed by, uh, by the combination of... Um, venetoclax and azacitidine. Of, of course, this potentially can be improved upon. Um, the responses were best and the survival benefit was best in those patients uh, with um, intermediate risk genetics and intermediate risk genomic. Those patients with adverse risk genomics, although had a high response rate, the responses are a shorter duration. So there is the potential to combine these um, doublet therapies, venetoclax and azacitidine, with other, other small molecule targeted agents. And there was data presented on the combination of ivacidinib with venetoclax, um, plus or minus azacitidine in IDH1 mutated uh, AML, which showed a very high response rate to the triplet combination. And this is on a small series of patients, just a phase 1B2 study. Uh, but I think uh, potentially um, does show that it is possible to combine these new agents with a high response rates, uh, much higher than we're conventionally used to seeing. Um, the one other um, agent that I think I'd like to mention is the anti-CD47 antibody, uh, magrolimab which data was presented by uh, Naval Dever, Dever from the MD Anderson uh, uh, in, uh, in Houston. Combine, uh, the, combining this antibody with uh, azacitidine uh, in a phase 1B study. 
so this is an antibody that blocks um, that uh, blocks uh, macrophage. It's an immune checkpoint inhibitor of uh, macrophages, um, and well tolerated. Um, and combined with azacitidine, there were some impressive results. There were just 29 patients treated, be in age of 74. Um, the majority had poor, over 70% 70, 70 of patients had poor risk cytogenetics. Uh, and uh, many had a AML with MRC. And uh, just under 50% were P53 mutated. And the combination was appeared well tolerated, similar profile to treatment with azacitidine alone. Uh, and the, 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 the um, responses were impressive uh, with um, achievement of complete remission in a significant number of patients with P53 mutated disease. I think about 50% uh, of patients uh, achieved not only a hematologic but cytogenetic remission. And of those patients, I think about another 50% were MRD negative. And some of the, and these responses do appear to be well maintained. Um, this is a, one of the most difficult um, subtypes of AML to treat. And I think uh, of the small number of patients treated, and I think we are talking about a small number of patients here, um, the majority were still in hematologic remission uh, at six months after completing therapy uh, or on therapy. And so this is, also potentially uh, a bridge to transplant um, for younger patients with this high risk um, genomic features.